Hello lovely friends, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I'm having a little sit down here before we go into another room because I'm finally going to give you a little bit of a nosy around the cottage in the sky. And today we're going to start in the bathroom. And what I hope to show in sharing my home like this is uh, what you can do with very little money. <laughs> Trust me, there's been very little. Um, so I thought just before we go in there, a brief, brief history. I'm going to try and keep it brief, despite my propensity for verbosity. <laughs> a brief history of the actual building and what I found when I moved in. So the the actual building was built around 1885, so where are we now? It's 135 years ago. And by London standards, <laughs> that's quite modern. It's about as modern as I want to go. So my whole area was only really developing in the late Victorian period as London was sort of expanding and moving out and out and out. This whole area had been sort of fields and farms and et cetera, et cetera. But gradually, yeah, London was spreading out. So it was built in about 18, 1880, 1885, and is part of a long row, a terraced row. I think in the States, is that what you call a townhouse? So I'm attached on both sides in in the row as it were so if you're standing in the street you look at the row and it's a row of about oh I've never counted I've never thought about it really about 40 buildings before the next little side road and then a whole nother row starts so the building is fairly narrow I'm about 25 feet wide by about I should have thought about this before I turned the camera on, maybe 50 feet deep or so. In total, I've got about 450 square feet here. Um, I had to work that out because I only know it in metres. I'm a little bit shy of 30 square metres. Anyway, yeah, so, you know, it's a modest size. Uh, I'm right in the top of the building in sort of in the roof but it was always meant as a dwelling space it was never meant as an attic for you know storing junk you can tell it was meant as a dwelling space because of how the windows you know it's had proper windows designed into the property way back in 1880 whatever and a fireplace you wouldn't have a fireplace if it was a storage attic it was a space for living quite probably because i've got a shop down below and that was always the intention when this row was built the whole row is shops below accommodation above and quite likely quite possibly i haven't looked into the history but whoever that shop owner was i was going to say she but it's more likely a he then to own um the family would have had so the shop is on the ground floor. The family would have lived in the first and second floors. And then any of their staff, <laughs> scullery maid, would live up where I live, up in... It's sort of like the attic, but it is accommodation. So, sweet little old building. When I bought it, 17, 18, coming up for 18 years ago, it had been a rental for about 30 odd years beforehand. All the flats had been rented out. They were a bit, they were a bit rubbish, to be honest. When they'd been done up at the beginning of the 80s in order to rent them out, everything was done sort of like the most cheap, including the bathroom, which we're going to in a second. So when I bought this flat, the other two flats were also bought at the same time. So for the first time in 30 odd years, they were being bought to be lived in by the person who'd bought them. They weren't being, you know, just do it up really cheaply, rent it out really expensively. So when I first came, the bathroom had a bog standard, but chipped enamel bath. I looked at the cost of um, having the whole bath resurfaced 
it wasn't very viable and it wasn't a special, it wasn't a beautiful bath that was, you know, worth doing that to. <laughs> One of the worst things was the lavatory cistern was plastic. It was a horrible plastic. And over time, it had been white, but over time that plastic had yellowed and become brittle. It was beyond ugly. The taps were the cheapest of cheap, you know, builder level taps, just horrible plastic, just utterly, utterly vile and ugly. And when I first came, I didn't have, well, I didn't have any money, I didn't really have time, I didn't have the resources to do anything with the bathroom, but it was a bugbear for ages and ages and ages, because I spend a lot of time in there. It's my total relaxation place. Um, so it made sense to do it up. Now, about 10 years ago or so, I'd been walking past a skip one day. I do love a skip dive. And I had spied, someone was doing a bathroom renovation, got job. So I spied um, a bath and a sink and they were both in a terrible state, but they had great taps on them. So <laughs> I'd spied this skip and I thought, oh yeah, whizzed back home, grabbed my spanner, was back to the skip I'd seen them in, climbed inside the skip and had those taps off. They were lovely. I wasn't sure exactly what they were at the time. It turns out they were really beautiful, original Edwardian taps. So I wasn't thinking about that at the time. I just thought they're really lovely taps. Even though I can't do my bathroom up, I can at least replace the horrible builder grade 1980s taps with these gorgeous Edwardian taps that's going to cheer me up no end, which it did. So I swapped them out. Then when I came to do up the bathroom eventually now, um, well, five years or so ago, I was looking at different bathroom furniture. It was the bath that started it. Looking at the price of having what was a horrible bath refinished, it was going to be over a hundred quid. So I started looking around at new bathroom furniture. I definitely wanted a new loo system. <clears throat> I did not want a plastic yellow loo system. It was vile. I mean, don't get me wrong. Look, it worked. If I had been, you know, absolutely on the breadline, of course I wouldn't have done it. I would have, I would have lived with that. But I wanted to change it. So I started looking around at bathroom furniture and, um, well, it was kind of around the January sales time. Don't ever do your building and all that other work in November, December, when everyone wants to get everything ready in their home for Christmas for visitors, because you'll pay a fortune. Do everything in January when everything's on sale. The crazy thing was, and I will show you in a second, to buy the bath, the hand basin, a new lavatory pan and a lavatory cistern, I worked out that I could buy all of that if, slightly regret it now, I sold those skip found taps at auction. I don't know what had prompted me to look but I went on a few auction sites and I was seeing similar taps and I was seeing the prices they were going for. And I thought, you know what, this, this is how I can have a new bathroom. Those skip found taps, let me sell them at auction and use that money to buy all new bathroom furniture and finally get the bathroom to how I wanted it to be. This is the result. Come on, let's go and have a nosy. It's very simple. But my bathroom faces north, so I've popped the light on because it might, we might be a little bit dark in there. So, looking one way, looking this way, and obviously you can see the eaves of the roof coming down in my little window there. But I got pretty much the top of my dreams. I really wanted a freestanding bath. Uh, this one has got a flat back, so it's not completely freestanding. 
But in terms of buying a freestanding bath, this was about half the price of a completely freestanding bath. But it does the same effect for me. And one of the reasons I wanted a freestanding is because it is a smallish home, just having things, having the freestanding, being up, it's a sort of a visual trick because you can see the floor and sort of see around and behind. It just gives the appearance of a bit more space rather than if this was a tub that was all boxed in, you'd have a big box here, that would make the room feel much smaller. So like I said, all the bathroom furniture, so the bathtub and then I got a new <laughs> lavvy pan. We won't dwell on the lavvy pan. And the cistern up there behind me, the sink. So all of these pieces I was able to buy with the proceeds from auctioning the, um, the taps. So yeah, great start. So in, effectively, they didn't cost me anything. And then in terms of the day called the tongue and groove, um, I did... I did buy the tongue groove, but the rails, the top rails and all the battening behind that the tongue groove is mounted onto, the bit of skirting, all of that was also skip finds. I mean, it doesn't matter, you can't see it all behind there, it was perfectly usable. Plus, this is also a skip find. You see where the cistern is mounted? You see it's actually, this is MDF. It's crazy. That's because where the loo is mounted there, oh, sorry, my knee just buckled. In terms of the stud work, the stud work behind the plasterboard, in other words, the stud work that you would screw, drill your, I mean, it's, you know, it's heavy without any water in. It needs to screw into something. The problem was the, what do you call it? The, the stud work, has not been done properly in these walls. Not by me, I hasten to add, when it was when the conversion was done in the 80s. So there's no studs behind it. So it's like, how on earth am I gonna? So <laughs> behind, behind that plasterboard, there is bracing. Then this, this whole piece of MDF, so right in the top of the system, it's screwed into this. Obviously the brackets are screwed into this. It's all kind of disguised and hidden. But that was the answer to being able to mount such a heavy piece where essentially there's no stud work to screw it into. I'm just going to swing you around actually because exactly the same was true. So let the light adjust, let the light adjust. Exactly the same was true for the sink. I didn't have any studs. It's absolutely crazy. And I didn't want to take the whole wall down to do that. So the sink screws kind of here, sort of underneath, inside this area underneath it screws. So again, behind the tongue and groove, there's a huge piece of wood mounted, screwed into the studs where there were studs. And then the sink is screwed into that piece of wood. Again, that was all from Skip's. This little bit of, oh, excuse me, little bit of boxing just to hide all the pipe work. That was from a skip. Also, swing you back around. I'm going to show you in a little bit more detail in a second. But I just want to talk about all the skip stuff. All the, the waste, um, all this boxing goes under the bath. All of this boxing. This is also made from scraps from basically skip finds. And if you see down here, let's get close in there. there. This on the bottom, this is just MDF, but to tie it into the tongue and groove, just used a router to route out these kind of lines. Now I know pretty much no one, not even me, gets under there to have a look, but just that kind of, yeah, just to finish it off so it didn't just look like plain MDF, but carried on a sort of tying in with the tongue and groove. So basically the only spends in the whole bathroom were, I had to get new taps because I'd sold my other taps. 
but the taps, the tongue groove and the paint was all I bought and I think in the end it came to, I think it was 250 quid. So I've done the whole bathroom for 250 quid. I mean, you can't say fairer than that, can you? The window was, it was cheaper for me to have a, um, a plain glass window, which I got, and then I just sprayed the frosting on myself. Uh, these geraniums, these are my mother plants, pelagoniums, whatever you want to call them. These are the um, mother plants that I take my cuttings from each year. That little chair, oh, sweet wee chair with its little woven seat that I picked up in a junk shop, oh, years ago for a fiver. Perfect, stick my towel there, then when I hop out of the bath, it's ready for me. Oh, this is one of my recent gifts, my knitted washcloth. And, um, you know, everything about my bath time is very simple. <laughs> this is all I need. <laughs> Bar of soap. Pumice, scrubbing brush, and that's for my nails because my nails are always full of um, soil, of course. Actually, also under here, I just boxed down. The eaves used to go all the way down, but my gas, my main gas pipe that comes in this way and goes into the kitchen for my boiler, etc., etc. I did want to just box that in and cover it up because it was a bit unsightly. You don't want to have pipes showing everywhere, do you? Um, yeah, so very simple bath time routine. That is my shampoo. I use a bar shampoo. That's from Lush. Skin brush, dry skin brushing before my bath. Ex expediates, not expediates. I can't think of the word, but it does away with the need for sort of using an exfoliator because that gets rid of all the dry bits. And look, my little new addition. Oh, I've forgotten the word again. This is co Oh, I've forgotten it again. Calancholy, that's it. This is a Calancholy plant in a really pretty pot that Richard and Paul just gave me. And I thought, actually, with the colours of the pot and my bathroom, it's perfect. I'll keep an eye on it because I don't know if this is going to be enough light for it because like I said, the bathroom faces north, but hopefully it'll be happy here. Now, just up on the wall, this is a lovely bit of needle point. Do you see? To my dear sister, my sister did this. Um, I'm looking at the date on it, 1984. My sister had been over to America in the summer. She was at university and she did the Bunak, um, things students from the UK going over there she was in Cape Cod lucky girl uh, teaching tennis and swimming and sailing and having a whale of a time so actually this kit it was a kit that came from Cape Cod or I don't know maybe it's when she finished at Cape Cod I think she went and stayed in Boston for a little while but yeah so it came from North America lovely just this side of the top, you've seen this in a couple of other videos, I think. This lovely painting of a place called Seacum Bottom. <laughs> it's a stone throw from where my grandparents used to live. My playground, my gorgeous, gorgeous playground. And right about just here on this ledge is where I had my first ever broken bone. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. A wave smashed me over. I had been told over and over again to keep away from the edge, keep away from the waves. Did I listen? I was six years old. No, I did not listen. I was smacked down onto the rocks and broke my little wrist. I still don't listen. And then on this wall... Oh, sorry, I should have said about that painting. I didn't pay for it. It, was, it belonged to my grandparents and my granddad gave it to me a few years ago. This I love. This is a map of Dorset and my grandparents were just down here in a little village on the hill and they later on moved down to the town here. So Seacon Bottom that I just showed you is around about here. This is beautiful. This is by a cartographer called 
Blau, 17th century cartographer. Uh, I was on a book buy when I was in my book buying days and the person who's getting rid of all the books said, would we be interested in this? And I said, yes, yes, straight away. And uh, decided to buy it and keep it for myself. I love it. So just swinging around. So amazingly, what I should say as well, sorry, is, oh, I don't know in feet and inches, sorry, but my bathroom is, well, you can see there's a little bend here for the window. That's to make the kitchen a bit bigger but at its widest the bathroom is about two meters wide by four meters long and actually for a london flat it's really pretty generous as bathroom sizes go let me just shut the door so we can see this end and i'll back up i'll back right up coming past the loo just to oh la, falling in the bath just to give you a sense of scale and space so I'm not even at the end of the of the bath where I'm standing, Lou, and you can see. So in a lot of London flats, this whole section you wouldn't have. The basin would be underneath the window, which I've got my back to at the moment, and yeah, it would end here. So I am lucky that, um, especially as studios go, I've got a lot of space. So more skip stuff and bargain stuff in this corner. I've got my little shelf here. That shelf I actually bought for, I think about five years ago. I've had it absolutely years. Perfect for holding things. But then when I did the bathroom up, as an addition, what I did, it didn't have this underneath. Just added these little brackets either end. This is a broom handle. These are some curtain pole finial. So the, the broom handle was an old broom handle I had. The curtain pole finials I picked up in a charity shop for 50p for the two of them. So I've, oh, let's move you out. It's meant to move, by the way, and twist around. Um, yeah, they were just wood, so I quickly painted them white. That addition is fantastic because, well, as you can see for now, I've got the towel on it. But also when I do my laundry, I never, I don't use a tumble dryer, I don't have one. I can hang on hangers, a bit of laundry there. I can also hang from hangers from the top shelf and the hook on the back of the door. They're right over the radiator. Works an absolute treat. So yeah, that whole kind of setup, that's cost me what, £5 for the shelf? And at most a quid for all the additions and the finials and the paint. Not bad, eh? The radiator cover. I knew that I wanted a radiator cover in here. This grill. Well, this is a bit. Actually, you can't even see the joins. This is a bit botched together. The grill was in one piece, but it was in a box in a. You know these big DIY centres that we have. Um, I don't know if it was X display or something, but it was all smashed up, bits missing, da da da. But the grill was in one piece. Now I think these kits, they're normally about £40 or something, it's crazy. Or I think maybe the, is the kit 20 but if you buy it ready painted it's 40 I can't remember. Anyway, this they were selling off in the bargain bin for a fiver. And I thought, a fiver, that's worth it just to have the grill in one piece. And I'm always, well, you, you know, by now I'm always skip diving. I'm always finding bits of MDF and any other bits of wood. And, you know, by the time everything's fitted together, sanded down and painted, you can't see the joins, can you? You can't see what was once broken and what was added to. So, yeah, I'm chuffed with that. So, again, that's kind of oh, five or plus, you know, a couple of quid's worth of paint, but... Also, in terms of paint, I get a lot of my paint from Freecycle. Not this sage colour, I did buy that, but things white, people always have some leftover white, whether it's primer, undercoat, emulsion, eggshell, there's always white paint going free on Freecycle. So, 
actually in my next place, if I do the whole place white, <laughs> in theory I ought to be able to do it for nothing. <sighs> Speaking of laundry and drying, um, just down here, <laughs> ignore my laundry basket. That's my little clothes horse, wooden clothes horse. It, it folds up and expands. That's how I dry my clothes, you know. I'm not paying for a tumble dryer, I'm not using energy, I don't have to find the space for a tumble dryer, just air dry every time. The little sink, I'm chuffed with this, because um, it's, it's kind of a little nod back to that sort of late Victorian, early Edwardian time, the lines, and obviously it's a modern flat, but I just love the lines of that period. And again, keeping life very, very simple. Bar soak, scrubbing brush. That's all I need. <laughs> and um, on the top of the rail. Oh, my wee fossils. I do like my fossils. And you know, the fossils hark back to Dorset too. A lot of you may have heard of Dorset being referred to as the Jurassic Coast. So fossils and of course, pebbles that spoke to me this is beautiful it's oopla it's shiny and smooth and gorgeous a little bit of a saucy girl this stone look looks like someone's painted it lovely oh my hawaiian girl gorgeous yeah and carrying on with the with the simple theme obviously my my skincare regime is very much calendula balm and oil i've just finished my last bit of oil what's up there i need to make some more yeah just keep it really really simple oh this i love this is this was from my colleagues when i left work it's in the shape of a robin because my ward was robin but it's made up of words that people associated with me at work i love it friendship laughs unforgettable fabulous i like that bit spirited vivacious lovely 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 gift from my ex-colleagues and friends from robin ward yeah all very simple that's a bit of beeswax for when i make some more um calendula balm to wait for this year's harvest epsom salts Oh, I love my Epsom salts to bathe in. That, <laughs> that's my emergency gym. <laughs> I hope you can, you can tell from that. It's not opened. It's still full. I'm not actually much of a gin drinker, but a friend gave it to me as a bit of a joke. So I keep it there because <laughs> you never know when you might need an emergency gin. So that's pretty much it. Um, and like I say, you know, Everything is very simple. My my washing routine and what I use, it's all very simple. How how I did the bathroom up, you know, again, it's all very simple. It's simple, but it's not minimalist. I do have stuff. I'm, I'm not really into the whole minimalism thing. But I just like this to be a calm, serene space. And, well, I hope you'll agree uh that you think it is it's so important isn't it to have to have points in our day or our week where we can just be somewhere that we're really really chilled and calm and happy and for me that's in the tub with a book yay so my lovelies i hope you enjoyed having a nosy <laughs> I need to replace this set of taps as well. That end's broken. It, it points too far backwards. It's all a bit of a niche. That's what I mean about saying I slightly regret auctioning my beautiful, what do you call them, my beautiful Edwardian taps. However, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have been able to buy all this new bathroom furniture. So yeah, that's my bathroom that I reckon has cost me 250 quid to completely revamp and make gorgeous and make just how I want it. So I'm going to leave it there and I will see you again for another nosier, a part of the cottage at some point. I'm not sure when.
I'll have to tidy first. <laughs> yeah, housework is not is not something I'm really into. It's kind of clean in here though, isn't it? So yes, I will see you again soon, either in the garden or we'll have a nosy at the working half of the main room through here. But no peeking for now. See you soon, lovelies. Take care of yourselves and each other and your bathrooms. <laughs> And your bathroom taps, if they're covered in lime scale, get the vinegar to them. Bye for now, everyone.